Welcome back. Next, we'll take a look at some more of our mapping iterators. And in this video, we'll be looking at each left and each right. So in all the iterators we've seen up to now, so when we looked at each, peach, and each both, remember we had that limitation when we had two lists of differing lengths, we would get a length error. So each left and each right don't have that limitation, um, which is great news. So let's look at that with an example to remind ourselves. So remember we had um, this example here, right back at the beginning of the module, and we said when we tried to use plus in between these two lists, we got a length error. By comparison, when we have lists of the same length on each side, we were able to do that operation. So to get around this length error, we can use either each right or each left. So let's look at each right first of all. So with each right, what we're doing is taking each element of the list on the right hand side. So each element of this list and we're applying that to the left hand side. So the amount of times the iteration is happening or the count is the same as the count of the list on your right hand side. So this is saying I want to add three to the list, two and three, four to the list, two and three and five to the list, two, three. So you'll see my output here has done that. So two is increased by three, three is increased by three, etc. And you'll notice if you run a count on this right hand side um, list, it would be the same as when you run a count on your output from the operation. So that helps me remember which one is which. I think um, knowing that the output shape or the output length is going to be the same length as your right hand side, that can help you determine sometimes which one you want to use. And this is the exact same thing as doing our addition here separately. So as we said, we're adding three, first of all, to the left hand side, then four, then five. And we get this output shape. Okay, so we have a few more examples here just showing instead of using addition, we're going to use the join operator first of all, and then we're going to use the multiply operator. So you'll see here, so we think, think of this again, I'm taking each of these elements and I'm applying it to the left. So first of all, I want to apply three to my entire um, left hand side. So I get three added on, then I want to apply four to my entire left hand side, I get four and so on. And then multiply, um, we get the same shape as plus because we're just changing those input values and I'm applying three, two plus three, four to two plus three and five to two plus three. Okay. And we're just making the point here, which I mentioned already, that the list that's returned from your each right will be the same number of items long as your right hand side argument. And that's because that's what you've actually iterated over. Okay, so each left, um, let's let's change it around. So the only difference between each left and each right here is in the notation is that it's a backslash rather than a forward slash. So you can try and remember backslash is leaning to the left, um, which means I'm using each left. So in this example here, let's look at what happens. So I'm taking each thing on the left hand side separately and I'm applying it to my entire right hand side. So I'm going to iterate over each of these elements. You see I'm applying two and adding it to three, four and five. So you'll see the output differs here to before. So why we've seen this here before that our, we had three elements or three lists returned in this example here, we only have two. And that's because we're only iterating twice in this example. And then when we, we join on, so this is saying take two and add my entire list on the right hand side, three or five, and then take three and add my or join, I should say, my entire list on the right-hand side. And then the final one is doing the multiplication. So it can be a little bit hard to grasp. So spend some time going through these and trying out different variations and, and lengths of lists. So for example, if I add on two more elements, what do we expect to happen? We see, we still get two lists I put it and our list here is just longer in each case. Okay, once you have had a look at that and have played around and are comfortable, we'll move on. Um, so we're gonna take the in operator that we've seen in previous video as well. So remember with each both, we were able to use in and run something like this, but when it came to using things of different lengths, so for example, if I wanted to run three, four, each both my list on the right hand side, I was getting a length there. So now that we have each left, 
left and each right, we can, we can do this. So each right, so let's remember that again, I'm taking each thing on the right hand side and applying it to the entirety of my left hand side. So this is saying is three and four in one, is three and four in one and four. So you'll see here three and four, neither of them in one, I'm getting two falses back. Three and four in one and four, three isn't but four is, I'm getting a true. It's three and four and two and three. Three is, so I'm getting a true, four isn't, so I'm getting a false, and then is three and four in three, five, six, and three is and four isn't. So if we see we added four here, for example, we'll get a true, okay? So you can see here, we don't need to have lists of the same length in this scenario. And we could even add another one, like one here, and you'll see that will change. Um, and because I'm using each right, it means my output list is gonna be four, because I'm iterating four times. Um, so no matter how many times I add um, things here, I'm still gonna get four lists. I'll just get more booleans returned because it's checking more values in my left-hand side list. Okay, and we've got another reminder here just to take some time to understand really what's happening in the above and, and making sure you're comfortable with that before you move on. Um, so some common usage with these iterators are with strings and in particular string manipulation and, and pattern matching. So if we have a list here and it's got three strings, so I've got one here, KDB is the fastest time series database and then KDB slash Q has Lambda architecture and Q is the programming language. So I'm saying this is my list L and I want to check if this string or this pattern KDB is in all of these lists. So my left hand side here is these three lists and then my right hand side is one list, which is KDB. And remember from our string manipulation module, we can use wildcard characters here um, as well. So I'm using each left in this case. So what's that saying to me is I'm gonna have an output that is a count of three because my list L is three and I'm using each left. So it's gonna take each thing on the left and apply it to the right. So what, what I get, I'm, I'm saying um, KDB is in the first and the second, but not in the third. And we can check that quickly and we say, yeah, that looks right. There's no KDB in the third. We could change that around and say, for example, if we had Q here, what do we expect? We'd expect that it would be the second and third one come back true. And that's the case. Okay, so this is really, really useful and used quite extensively um, in, you know, in, in a lot of projects. So let's extend that and make our pattern a list. So in this example here, we've got a set of IDs, which is a list of four elements long. And then we have our patterns. And instead of just having one pattern, we've got two here. So it's a list of two elements long. So I flipped the iterator. So instead of using each left here, I'm using each right. So this is saying, take each of my patterns. So take A, first of all, check is that in IDs and it's A, it's beginning in A. Remember from our streaming definition module, we can just have the asterisks on one side and that's just gonna give us things that are beginning in A. So I think that's gonna give me a true, true, false, false. And then I'm gonna get a second row because I'm using each right here and it's gonna say, what is any of these ending in zero, one, two, three? And I think I'm gonna get a true, false, true, false for that. So let's have a, a check of that. And I haven't defined patterns yet. And let me move on. Okay, so is that what I expect? Yes, I think it is. So we've got patterns. So A is in the first two, so you get true, true, and then false, false, it's not in the last two. And we know because it's each right, if we had run a count on patterns, we would have got two. And if we run a count on the result from pattern check, we'll get two as well, because we've got two lists. Okay. Now we can also take this result, and when we've got lists of booleans, um, generally we want to summarize that for, for ourselves. So for example, we've got a few keywords. Remember we had all, so if we had 1100B, we'd have all here. So if whether they were all true or all false, you'd get a true or false. And we also had this anyone, so are any of them true? Or changing some of them to false here, we get there, some of them are true. So we're just showing you can use that across this pattern check. Um, so when we have two lists of booleans, we're just showing here if we had two. So for example, we'll use the example here. So I'm just putting this into a list of lists. 
So it's going to say, are any of this element and this element true? Yes. And then this thing with this one. Yes. And then the third one. Yes. And then both, because the last one here, both are zero. That's why I'm getting a zero. So we should see the same returned when we run any just straight on the pattern check. Um, and then remember, we have this where keyword as well. So if we use where in front of this, um, we get the indexes where the trues are occurring. And then if we pass our initial list that we had back at the beginning into this, we'll actually get those IDs themselves out. So where any of those things are true, we get them returned. So all of this stuff here, we've seen before in the string manipulation module, um, it's all our, going back to our regex and our, our pattern matching. The only things we're introducing here is the addition of each left and each right in order to apply um, these checks across lists of different lengths. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're just repeating here. Checking for these multiple patterns is very common. Um, and this, this, this syntax here. So at this point, I'd say just take some time, let that sink in, head over to the code.kx.com page. And if you click on iteration up here um, and you go to maps, so you'll see here up at the, the reference card, it's one of the top ones. Um, there's some really, really great additional examples here. As you scroll down the page, I'm just going to hit on each left, each right. And we've even got kind of a diagram to represent what I was describing there. So when we have each right, it's taking um, each thing on the right and applying it to uh, the list on the left. Um, and then similarly with each left. And you'll see here we've got lots of examples with different data types. So the string manipulation one here and adding on, um, appending on characters to existing strings and then um, using things with numeric data as well. Um, and there's also a really, really great white paper. We've got some great examples in there as well. Okay. Um, once you're feeling comfortable, you can have a go at this exercise. Um, so create a multiplication matrix using this list. And we want you to use the iterators you just learned about to do this. And then there's a bonus exercise here. Um, once you've got that working, are you able to get it into a character count of 11. So code golf for anyone that doesn't know um, is when your character count is is low. So the lower the better. Um, so yeah, some people play this and um, have a lot of fun with it. Um, so you can have a go with that as well. Okay, and I'll see you in the next video.